You don't watch me. Hey Shelby, how are you? Hey Haley. Turn the volume down. We're getting surround sound. Brooke's got her volume on watching me. Hey, Sister Martha. Wait just a few moments and let some more folks get on before we get started this evening. Hey, Brother Doyle. trying to greet everybody as I see them come on so if you're on and I don't greet you it's just because I don't see your little picture amen good hey sister Cecilia hey Donna Hey, Sister Laura. Hey, Sister Julie. Tell Brother Oral I said hello. Well, I guess he can hear me. Hey, Brother Oral. <laughs> His family right now, I will tell y'all, it's different talking into a camera than it is talking to a sanctuary full of people. But it's all right. The Lord's helping us. Hey, Sister Ann and Brother Hubert. Good to see y'all. Looks like Brother Ethan's picture just came up. There he is. Hey, Sister Jan. Hope you and Brother Robert are doing well this morning. Or this evening, I should say. I hope y'all did well this morning, too. I was thinking about y'all. Y'all got to watch church in two time zones this morning. That works out pretty good. Amen. I'm going to wait just another moment. We sent out a, uh, a text message to the uh, group text. If you haven't subscribed to that, uh, please do that. I think that will be the best way for us to collect prayer requests. I thought about doing it in, in Facebook. Um, I'm glad you weren't late, Sister Jan. I figured he might have just been poking fun at you, but I didn't know for sure. We can have a good time. Going back to prayer requests, we thought I thought about putting it on Facebook, but um, you know, some folks might want to turn in prayer requests that they might not necessarily want everybody to know. So I really want to use that texting app. We'll use it to send out updates if we need to. 
but that group text uh, that we've asked you to subscribe to, we're going to try to use that to collect prayer requests. So we sent one out uh, about 4 o'clock asking you to text your prayer request uh, in there, and we did get a few, um, and we'll share those with you in just a moment. But if you're on with us and you'd like to type a prayer request that everybody can see that you don't mind sharing openly, then if you want to type that in the chat box, we'll go to prayer with that in just a moment. But if you haven't subscribed to the text updates, just open up a new text message on your phone and type in the number 94000 or 94000 and just type the word SAP and hit send and you should get a message back saying that you're subscribed to the text uh, updates. And you can reply to those text messages. It's not on my phone like a normal text, but I can get on the internet and I can see uh, if you send something back to that. So as I said, we're going to try to use that to collect prayer requests. That's something that I was really racking my brain about, uh, that I wanted us to still be able to do, that I thought, well, that might be a little bit more difficult, that we're not in person. Uh, so I thought if we could collect them in some way and then put them out um, after the fact that that would help us. Uh, Sister Sandra maintains a ongoing prayer list for us, and uh, she had went ahead and proactively told me that she was going to be working on updating that. So be looking for that. We'll probably post that on the Facebook page when we get all of that together uh, because we definitely want to pray with, with everyone and bear one another's burdens. Um, we know that there's power in prayer, and we know that we need to agree together. And so we want to continue to be able to do that. Sister Haley's also, she volunteered. I appreciate this so much. I mentioned the website in my uh, update that I sent out yesterday, and I mentioned us building a website, and she just went ahead and jumped in and volunteered to work on that. So she's working on that for us as well. Um, that way there's one place that we can uh, direct people to. Facebook is a great medium, uh, obviously, and I think that was the easiest way for us to start out connecting, but not everybody's on Facebook, and so that website will help us even further uh, during this time to be able to stay connected. So let me go ahead. We'll just I want to share just a few uh, prayer requests with you. I just got a few in. Uh, there's a few uh, folks in ministry. Hey, Sister Sandra, hope you and Brother Jerry are doing well. There's a few folks connected in ministry as well, uh, missionaries mainly, that I've become aware of that uh, have contracted the virus, and so I've got them on our list, list as well. And like I said, if you'd like to share a prayer request, you can type that in the comment box. Uh, everybody will see it, so make sure it's something that you don't mind everybody knowing. Um, but if you want to share that, uh, that would be wonderful. I don't know if my dad is listening right now. I see my mom watching, but... Happy birthday, Dad. We're practicing social distancing, and <laughs> uh, I haven't got a chance to see him today, but I'm going to call him as soon as we get done here, but maybe he can hear me now. Wish him a happy birthday. Um, but the prayer request that we got in, Sister Lillian had asked prayer. Her right knee, she had asked prayer for this, I want to say, the last Sunday that we were in church together, her right knee coming out of place and uh, still uh, recovering from that stress fracture that she had in her left heel. Uh, Sister Mary Powell uh, is dealing with a lot of inflammation from her rheumatoid arthritis, and she said that she actually dropped a cup of coffee in the bedroom this morning because it's really flaring up and giving her a lot of trouble, so we want to continue to pray for her. Uh, and then Sister Donna asked prayer. She's asked prayer for the Smitherman family. Uh, that Brother Smitherman is not doing well, so we want to remember that family in prayer. Uh, a few of... Uh, Different missionaries, some of them uh, we know more well than others. Uh, good to see you, Sister Angie. Hope you and Brother James are doing well. Uh, Ron Maddox, I believe, if I'm correct, that we actually support him as a missionary. Uh, he works in the Asia area, and uh, he has contracted the coronavirus. Um, he is uh, doing well, all things considered, I think I would say it that way. Um, but we still need to be much in prayer for him. Uh, he is stable. The 
entire worldwide uh, missions director for the Assemblies of God, Greg Mundus. Both he and his wife have contracted the coronavirus. They are hospitalized in Springfield, Missouri right now. And uh, Brother Greg, his wife is doing well, uh, but um, he is he's having uh, kind of a a seesaw medical experience. Uh, he gains uh, strength at points um, and then goes downhill, but he is in critical condition, uh, so we need to be much in prayer for him. And then I just saw on Facebook this afternoon, uh, and I believe there there are two people by this name. Uh, I believe there's, there's someone else that preaches by this name, but Daryl Turner, he's a missionary. The last that I knew, uh, he was stationed in Armenia, uh, but I'm not sure what his what his current station is. But I found that he had contracted the coronavirus as well, uh, and there are many many other missionaries around the world uh, that have contracted the virus. Some of them are on quarantine. Uh, they're they're not sick, but you know they're in countries that are in a shelter in place, and so we need to pray for them. Another thing that I had not thought about was that there are missionaries around the world that have chosen to stay in their country uh, instead of come home uh, for various reasons. I trust that they're obeying the Lord and using wisdom, but just doing what they feel like they need to do. And we certainly uh, need to be in prayer for those folks as well. So if no one else wants to share anything, I don't see any requests in the, in the chat box. We just want to take these needs before the Lord this evening. And then I just want to speak to you from my heart a little bit. seems like we're all uh, pretty well family that's watching right now. And if you're watching later and you're not a part of our church family, we're glad that you're watching too. But I just was really reflecting on what God has done for us over the last month or so in our church family. And I just felt that I needed to bring some of that into focus just to show just how faithful God has been to us because he surely, surely has been. Uh, and so I believe this is going to be a blessing to us tonight. But let's go to prayer if we can right now, right there in your living room or if you're watching on your phone, you're out and about wherever you are, let's go to prayer for these needs and just believe God to touch and hear and heal. We know that he's able to do so, and we want to agree together in prayer this evening. Father, we do come before you this evening. Lord, we are gathered together. We're not gathered together in the same physical place, God, but we are in one mind and one accord, just as they were, God, on the day of Pentecost, Lord, and we agree together over these prayer requests. For those that have been brought for our church family, pray that you would touch Sister Lillian, Lord, this evening. Pray that you would touch Sister Mary tonight. Pray for this request that Sister Donna brought for the Smitherman family that you would continue to touch them, Lord, and be with them. Lord, we do pray for our missionaries around the world, for Ron Maddox and Greg Mundus and his wife, uh, and for Daryl Turner as well, and other missionaries that I don't know their names, but they have contracted the virus. Uh, some have chosen to stay abroad during this time to continue your work in ministry. And God, we just pray a hedge of protection around them. For those that need healing, God, we pray that you would heal them, that you would give strength to their families. God, I pray that you would touch the hand of every practitioner that is working with your servants, Lord, that have contracted this virus, that you would give them knowledge, that you would give them wisdom. But God, we know that you're able to heal any manner of sickness and disease. As the doctors are scrambling to try to figure out what to do, as the medical labs are scrambling to try to come up with a vaccine and a cure, God, we know that you have the cure already. And so we're asking that your mighty healing power would be placed on display and that you would touch each and every person that is affected. And Lord, I do pray a hedge of protection around our church family right now, around our community, around this state, around our counties. God, that you would keep each and every one of us safe. Lord, that you would give us wisdom during these troubling times. Father, I believe you have demonstrated to us that you will give us wisdom, you will give us knowledge, and you will give us guidance. Lord, you've been good to us this last month. Father, I believe you've prepared us spiritually for what we're walking through right now. And that's what I want to reinforce to us this evening. And so we ask for your grace and ability to do that tonight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Let me walk you down memory lane, if I can. I've said that before that if we will place ourselves before the Lord humbly and we will listen to that still small voice that speaks to us, if we will stay close to his word, if we will allow him to guide us and direct us, that he will do that and he will even prepare us ahead of time, I believe, for things that we couldn't possibly know are around the corner. 
We've seen that in so many different ways in our church family. And as I think back over the last month in particular, personally I think to this fact that Sister Brooke and I, after Brother Robert fell ill and y'all elected us to be your pastors, we've been at that at the church for two years and I have prayed many, many times, and I said this from the pulpit in January, that I have prayed many times about preaching on the subject of faith, and I just had never felt the release to do that until about a month ago. And the Lord released me to do that and began to lay several messages before me regarding the subject of faith. Now, whenever he did that, could we have known that there was a global pandemic around the corner? No, we certainly could not have. Could we have known that different places would be closing, that schools would be closed, that businesses would be closed, that you couldn't find toilet paper, that you couldn't find anything you needed in the grocery store? No, we could not have known that. But it was simply listening to God and being directed by His Holy Spirit that I believe prepared us for this. And I wish that I could remember everything about all these last, uh, well, maybe last five weeks now, because we missed church last week, but that month of services that we preached on the topic of faith, how God's word came forth in power, how God showed his power so mightily in the altar services, how we saw miracles, how people were being uplifted, how people were being set free from uh, physical ailments and emotional baggage that had plagued them for a long, long time. It was just so amazing what God did and we were shouting and we were praising God, but I really now, in retrospect, I see that God, I believe, was preparing us for this time that we're in. So like I said, if I could just walk you down memory lane a little bit, uh, the first message that I preached on faith, I entitled it, The Awareness of Faith. And you'll remember I talked about Abraham going to the mountain to sacrifice Isaac. And how the scripture says that God did tempt Abraham, but that word for tempt really would be better known to us as a testing, that he tested Abraham. And I said, did God need to test Abraham to see how much faith he had? No, he certainly didn't. God knew the level of Abraham's faith. But a test does something. It reveals to us how much we know, how well versed we are in a subject. And so I made mention during that sermon that our faith will be tested, but it's a testing to reveal to us the level of faith that we have. First Peter talks about it in chapter 1 and verse 7. He said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth it, that it be tried with fire, that it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of of Jesus Christ. And so the testing of Abraham's faith revealed to him his own faith. It wasn't something that God needed revealed, but it was something that Abraham needed to be revealed. And I may mention in that sermon that you only find faith mentioned, I believe it's two times in the Old Testament, only once in the positive. So we look to Hebrews chapter 11 for these uh, for an expansion on these Old Testament saints of God and their faith. And in Hebrews it says that Abraham didn't exactly know what God was going to do, but he knew even if he had to bring Isaac back from the dead, that God was going to remain faithful to him. And we see that in Genesis, that when Abraham goes up the mountain, he says, the lad and I go yonder to worship, and we will return to you. And so I believe this. I believe that there are things that we have seen in our midst in the last five or so weeks that has built our faith, that has revealed our faith to us, that maybe if we hadn't experienced some of the wonderful services that we've had, Maybe if we hadn't experienced some of the messages that God had led us to preach, that maybe our faith wouldn't be so strong during this time, but God knew what was coming. We say often, God already knew it. It didn't take God by surprise. Church, I believe, I believe with all my heart that not only did this not take God by surprise, but that God was helping us and preparing us for a time such as this. And 
I don't know exactly how this whole situation is going to work out. I don't know how God's going to work it out. But I find myself being a little bit like Abraham at the base of that mountain saying, I don't know exactly how God's going to do it, but I know that he's going to do it. I know that God is in control. I don't know what the answer to this pandemic is, but I know that God has the answer and that Jesus is the answer, and I have that confidence. The following Sunday, preached a message on the cross-eyed Christian. You remember the example I took from John chapter 5, the man that was there uh, at the pool, the pool that would be stirred by an angel, and that they would all rush to the pool Uh, And Jesus saw that man, and he asked him, he said, Wilt thou be made whole? And that man said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming another step down before me. Now, I would have never thought that we might feel that way about toilet paper or meat, (laughs) that another stepped in right before me and got the last bundle of tissue paper, (laughs) or someone stepped in right before me and got the last pack of hamburger. But maybe we feel that way sometimes. Goodness, I wish I could have been a little bit quicker. Goodness, if I would have had more resources, maybe I just could have made it. But Jesus said unto that man, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And it said immediately that man was made whole, and he took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. And the message that I preached about the cross-eyed Christian was this, that that man, as Jesus came, He had his eye on that pool. He was constantly watching that pool, just like everybody else, waiting for the water to be stirred, thinking that that was the answer. And then Jesus came, who was the answer. And there had to be a point in that man's life whenever he took his eyes off of the pool and he fixed his eyes on Jesus. And that is when his answer came. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That word for looking means fixing, focusing, casting your gaze upon Jesus Christ. And if there's ever a time that we need to do that, it is now. I preached that message about the cross-eyed Christian and I preached about things that we look at and we're trying to look at Jesus at the same time, but we can't fix our eyes upon him if we're looking at two things at once. And my goodness, I could never have envisioned the distractions and the things that would be placed before us that could draw our attention away from Jesus Christ. But we must have our eyes fixed on him. Hebrews says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author and the finisher. We must look upon him. We must gaze upon him. We must keep our eyes focused upon him during this time. And I, my kind of conclusion to that was we don't need to be a cross-eyed Christian, but we need to be a cross-eyed Christian with our eyes fixed on the cross, with our eyes fixed on on Jesus Christ. Then, if you, uh, the next sermon, we preached from Matthew chapter 8. We preached on the subject of authority and the understanding of authority and how it relates to our faith in Jesus Christ. How there was a Roman centurion that came to Jesus and said, my servant is at home sick. And Jesus said, well, I'll come heal him. And he said, no, you don't need to come to my house. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. You just speak the word and he'll be healed. And the Roman centurion said this unto Jesus, he said, For I am a man under authority, and I have those that are in authority under me. I say to one to go, and he goes. I say to one to come, and he comes. So he understood authority, and he had faith in Jesus. And Jesus marveled at the faith of the Roman centurion, and he said, I have not found such great faith as this, not even in Israel. Because he understood authority. You go down further in chapter 8 and we find one of those stories where the disciples are in Jesus, with Jesus in a ship and there's a storm that arises. And Jesus is asleep and the disciples come and they wake him and they say, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And he arose and he rebuked the winds 
he rebuked the waves. And then he said to them, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? And it said that they marveled at what manner of man this was, that even the winds and the seas obeyed him. We need to remember that Jesus Christ has authority over all things. That was what the Roman centurion understood that the disciples had yet to grasp early on in that gospel in Matthew. They had yet to grasp the fact that he had authority over everything, that there wasn't a problem that was too big for him. There wasn't a problem that was too small for him. He had the authority to take care of each and every problem, to meet each and every need, and he's able to do that today, and I believe that. We see that juxtaposition there in that story of faith and fear because Jesus said to the disciples, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Indicating to us this, that the greater our faith is, the less fearful that we should be. And I believe that whenever we look around us at the circumstances that surround us today, as I mentioned this morning, it's very, very easy for us to be gripped with fear. And that's part of what I believe the Lord was speaking to us. As we started out with the awareness of faith with Abraham, God will allow us to go through experiences so that we understand our faith, so that we exercise our faith, so that we have a testimony to stand on, so that we have a solid rock to stand on, so that we know that we know that we know that God can come through. Then he brought us down to the cross-eyed Christian about focusing on him. Then he brought us down to an understanding of authority that we understand that Jesus is able to do anything that we would ask or think. Then the last time that we were together in the sanctuary on Sunday morning, we preached from Matthew chapter 9. And we took from that chapter, I made mention of the fact that in Matthew's gospel, it's unique to his gospel, we find that there are four different examples of faith that are found there in that gospel. We find that as the gospel opens, that there is a man that is brought to Jesus who is sick of, uh, sick of the palsy, and that Jesus says, Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And then those scribes that were there said, He blasphemeth, Jesus said, Where, uh, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is it easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that ye know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. I went over to Mark chapter uh, 2 that morning, and... Uh, showed us that this was the same man that was born of four that was carried up onto the roof and they took the roof off to lower this man now, down to Jesus. And Jesus makes, it's recorded for us in Mark that Jesus said that he saw the faith of those that carried that man. And in times like this, we need to know that we can take not only our needs, but the needs of others before the Lord and that he will hear us. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. If we go on, uh, down in Matthew chapter 9, uh, we find that Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house uh, where his daughter is ill. And we find in that story uh, that double miracle that Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. And while he is in transit, while he is on his way, that the woman with the issue of blood presses through the crowd and touches the hem of his garment. And he says to her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. We need to understand that we can reach out and touch the hem of his garment, that he is accessible to us, that we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We can reach out to him. We can talk to him. We can touch the hem of his garment. We believe that tonight. And then when Jesus came to Jairus' house, there were those that were already wailing, that were already crying. Uh, the, Jesus said, give place for the maid is not dead. And it says that there were those that laughed him to scorn. Wow. Jesus coming into the house where death has occurred and saying the maid is not dead and people laughed at him. Friends, the faith that comes from God is not of this world. 
And there may be people that will scoff at it sometimes, that will laugh at it sometimes, but that doesn't change who God is. That doesn't change God's ability to hear and answer prayer. And so I may mention we have to be careful who we surround ourselves with, and I believe that's important in this time too. Now let me go one step further and apply it to where we are right now. I believe it's not just important the people that we surround ourselves with, but also the people that we allow to speak into our lives. And I'm not just talking about people that we know, people that we're on a first-name basis with, because on the television, on the Internet, there are all types of people that would like to speak all sorts of things into our lives, into the lives of this country, into the lives of each and every person in this nation. And some of those are not people that we necessarily need to be uh, listening to. Now, I believe we need to listen to our uh, federal, state, and local authorities. I believe we need to listen to medical professionals. But some of these people, during this time of pandemic, I mentioned it this morning, they're not giving advice. They're not giving encouragement. They're not trying to help. They're trying to sow seeds of discord. They're trying to put people at odds with one another. They're arguing. They're bickering in a time that this country should be coming together, in a time that the church should be coming together. They're trying to cause division. And so we need to be careful, those types of people that we allow in our lives. Jesus put those folks out of the house before he raised Jairus' daughter. And then we came on down to the... uh, uh, to the... Let me see. Sorry, I lost my place. The last story in Matthew chapter 9 begins in verse 27, that when Jesus departed from Jairus' house, that two blind men followed him, saying, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And that when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. I believe that's a great question for us this evening. Believe ye that I am able to do this. The needs that will arise in our own lives, in the lives of our families, in our church family, that may confront us in the coming days, the coming weeks, I pray it's only weeks, possibly the coming months. We don't know. But they may be things that we haven't encountered before. And the Holy Spirit may begin to ask us this question, Believe ye that I am able to do this. Well, I say to you with confidence tonight that I believe the Lord is able to do it. Now, like I said, and I'm going to talk about this in just a moment, I believe we need to listen to the federal, state, and local authorities As we were finishing up Romans, one of the last things that we studied in that book was that the leaders that God has put in place, that they are tools in God's hands. And so I believe that we need to listen to them. If they're not asking us to do something that's contrary to Scripture, if they're not asking us to do something that would not be in line with our relationship with God, as long as they're not asking us to do that, and I have not heard any of them ask us to do that, then we need to listen to them. God has put them in authority, and they are tools in his hands. I want to talk about that for just a moment, because in times like this, I just want to be very, very practical, because we think about this virus is out there. We don't want to walk in fear. We want to walk in faith. But what does that mean? Does that mean that we just go about without taking any precautions? I don't, I don't think that would be wise. Uh, the government says, wash your hands. I believe you ought to wash your hands. Uh, I'm quickly running through it, but I keep a bottle of hand sanitizer with me. I sanitize my hands. If I do have to go into the store and get something, I try not to touch my face. I sanitize my hands when I get in the car. And so I'm taking all those precautions. I don't think it would be wise just to say, well, I've got faith, and so I'm not going to wash my hands. I don't believe that would be wise. But I was thinking about this, and in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus, after he is baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, he's led into the wilderness, and he fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he's tempted by the devil. 
And the second temptation that the devil places before him in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, Then the devil taketh him up into it, the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Let me tell you what that means to me in light of these current circumstances that we're in. That means to me that we need to use wisdom. That means to me that we should not intentionally put ourselves in a situation that might subject us to this virus. I don't believe that that shows a lack of faith. If Jesus would not just willingly throw himself off the uh, pinnacle of the temple just because the angels would catch him or could catch him, then I don't believe that we should do anything that would unnecessarily subject ourselves to this virus. So, I don't believe that it decreases our faith, diminishes our faith, or shows a lack of faith in any way if we use wisdom, if we use knowledge, we use caution, and we listen to those that are in authority over us. Now, that's going to be different for each and every one of us. They've put out guidelines very specific that those that have medical issues, and we, you could go on down the list, you know what the guidelines say. So that may look different for different people. But I want to encourage you tonight that if you're being wise with your health, if you're being a good steward of the temple of the Holy Spirit that God has entrusted to you, your body, that that does not diminish your faith in any way whatsoever. Jesus said, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so that doesn't diminish our faith in any way. We need to use wisdom. We need to yield ourselves to the leadership, guidance, and direction of the Holy Spirit. We need to stick closely to God's word because Romans chapter 10 says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we're going to need faith during this time. Let me mention one other thing. I never got to got to the point where I was able to, to preach this on Sunday morning. It was uh, going to be one of the last sermons that I preached regarding faith, but well-known scripture to us, James chapter 2, verse 7, 17 says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. As this situation progresses, there will be needs that arise, and as a church, as God's people, we need to do our very best if we are able to help one another and to show the love of Christ during this time. That's extremely important. We need to look out for each other in our church family. We need to look out for our neighbors. We need to look out for those that are going to be working. Even if everything else shuts down, our healthcare workers are going to be working. Our first responders are going to be working. There are those in the public health field that are going to be working. I know some of these restaurant folks are going to stay working as long as they will enable them to, doing to-go orders and things of that nature. And you've probably seen multiple lists of people that we need to be thankful for. I went to the grocery store yesterday. The line was long. I told the lady when I got up there to check out, I said, I appreciate you so much. I know you're having a busy day. I know y'all are chaotic. I know the lines are long, but I want you to know that I appreciate you and what you're doing. I want you to know that I appreciate you showing up for work today. I just so happened to hear her manager on the phone with somebody that was calling out. And so there was somebody that didn't want to come to work today, but that lady was there. She was being faithful to that job that God had placed her. She's a Christian lady. I don't know her well, but I know her enough to know that she's a Christian. Uh, and so she was being faithful and we need to do what we can to support one another during this time. So I encourage you, check on your church family. Check on your neighbors. One of the things that I'm having a hard time with is that I get to see most of y'all at least once a week, a lot of y'all twice a week, some of y'all three times a week, and I get to check in and see how you're doing. Even if I just get to shake your hand and hug your neck before service or after service, I know that you're doing well. I know that you're doing okay. And the fact that I can't lay eyes on people is a little bit difficult for me as a pastor. But I also know this. There's not enough time in my day 
to check on each and every person that is connected to our church. And so more, now more than ever, we need to be the body of Christ. We need to be the family of God. We need to check on one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to bear one another's burdens. And as I mentioned, uh, the deacon board, we talked about it Friday night, and we're putting together a care team, people that will be responsible for checking on people, identifying needs if they arise, finding the best and the quickest way to meet that need. And so I appreciate the deacon board and their leadership and their foresight in seeing that need. Uh, and so we're putting that together. They're working on that, and we appreciate them working on that so much. But James said it, faith without works is dead if we just have faith alone. If there is ever a time that the church can rise up and show itself mighty, it's the time that we're living in today. There were people that did not even live, I know because we heard from some of them this morning, did not live in our city, did not live in our community. They didn't live in Cottondale. They didn't live in Chipley. They didn't live in the Sap community. They didn't live in Washington County or Jackson County that heard the message that went forth from the church this morning and it blessed them, it touched them, it spoke to them. That's an encouragement to me because we're doing our best to remain faithful, to preach the gospel, to share hope with people, to share the love of Christ with people, to share their faith, to share faith with people, to share our faith with them, to help to build their faith. And this is a time that the church needs to come together. This is a time that the church needs to show the love of God to our community, to our county, to this state, and I pray to this entire nation. If you are uh, friends with many people on Facebook, you saw so many people sharing different church services this morning. That's exciting to me. If somebody was on Facebook this morning, they could have gone to church. Whether they intended to or not, they could have gone to church. They could have watched somebody. That's encouraging to me. And I pray that this reflection tonight has been an encouragement to you. Church, let me say it one more time. I believe so strongly as your pastor. I didn't know what was coming, but God knew. And I believe that he was preparing his church for this time. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we know that down in verse 6 it says that without faith it's impossible to please him. So God has done the work. God has done the work of building our faith over these last five to six weeks. He's built it for a purpose. He's built it for a purpose. He has built our faith so that we can trust. We know we can trust him. We know that we can rely on him. We can read it in his word, but we've talked about it in church, that it's something different when you have that experience. But I'm so thankful that we serve a God that we can still experience. There are people around the world from many different religions, some of them, they worship a God or an ideology, and it is nothing but that. But we have a God that we can experience. We feel his Holy Spirit. We see the move of his power. And we've experienced that in the last six weeks. God has prepared us, church. I pray that we stay faithful to him. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Fix your eyes upon him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Pray for one another this week. I ask you to pray for me. I would like to, if my schedule allows, I just never know what's going to happen in a given day, but I'd like to put out some short devotionals in the morning time to help us. Uh, and so I ask that you would pray for me, that God would give me the ability to do that. When I did that uh, Friday morning, I believe it was, it was an early morning. Uh, I was up at, up at 5.30 and hitting the road to get to the church and put it out when people were out of bed, uh, and then make it to work. So I hope to be able to do some of that this week. Um, we hope that next Sunday that we'll have uh, things in place where we can bring a Sunday school lesson to you. And I don't know how long we'll have to do church like this, but it's my desire and it's the desire of the board that we continue to make the experience better and better, to make it feel more like church, even if you're sitting on your couch that it feels more like church, that we can have Sunday school. I pray that we get to the point that we can have some uh, worship 
and we'll do different things. Uh, the, the microphone uh, on this laptop that I'm using, I can't get far back from it. I tested it out this morning where I could stand up and move around a little bit, but the sound wasn't good enough. And so we're going to be striving to put things in place where we can do that uh, and just bring more of a full uh, Sunday church experience to you and going to be bringing you words of encouragement more often throughout the week if the Lord will allow us to do so. We love you very much. Call us anytime. Text us anytime. If you can't get a hold of me, call someone else. Uh, I may be in a mandatory meeting or something. I always tell folks, if you get my voicemail, if you leave me a voicemail, I'll call you back. I'll text you back. I don't ever like to ignore anybody, and I never do intentionally. Uh, sometimes a day is easy to get away from me, especially with mandatory meetings and things of that nature and just going from one thing to the next. And I'm sure, as y'all can imagine, it's a busy time at work right now. Uh, so pray for one another uphold one another. We love you each and every one. Reach out to us if you need to. If you haven't signed up for those text updates, open up that text message. Text 94000. That's the number you need to text and just text the word SAP, S-A-P-P, and that will get you in the text updates and we'll be asking for your prayer request uh, through that through that, through that that method uh, so that uh, we can continue to pray for one another. I love you all so very much. Wish I could give each and every one of you a neck hug and a handshake, and I'm sad that I can't do that, but I'm so thankful that God has afforded us the opportunity to gather in this way, to love on one another, to encourage one another. Share this on your Facebook page. Whenever it's over, you can go and click share, put it on your page, so that people that may not have liked the church page or don't follow the church page can see it, and we'll continue to spread hope and build people's faith during this time. Love you each and every one. God bless you is our prayer. We want you to stay safe and stay well. God bless you and we love you.